Hello and welcome to the awful and awesome entertainment rap episode 348. I'm Abbas and I'm Nanika. And when the inmates are away, no, the, when the guards are away, the inmates will play. I always screw up this line. I don't know why. Despite, you almost uh, forgot your punchline. That is, that is not done. I know. Uh, <sighs> or maybe I'm, I've, I've turned into an authoritarian now, and I see myself as a guard more than an inmate. Yeah, I guess you know we've times. been doing this for a while. I think you have to come up with something new. Even the line is like, hmm, maybe it's not working out between us. All right. So uh, we'll be talking about some uh, pop culture stuff, uh, some releases that happened in the last week. We're going to. be talking about two major Netflix releases one of them star Andrew Scott of Fleabag fame uh, every woman's favorite man on the planet uh, we're going to be talking about Scoop uh, which is uh, a new expose journalism film uh, about the Prince Andrew uh, scandal that happened which is not related with the Hansal Mehta scoop that happened uh, that was released in India then we'll talk about some uh ad campaign songs that uh, some major political parties have uh, released uh, we'll talk about whether they worked on us or not to vote for their respective parties and finally we'll be talking about something i requested for which is wrestlemania 40 which uh, despite my best uh, efforts i wasn't able to ha- have nanika watch the full thing over the I weekend i mean it just it didn't make sense cuz i completely lack context like i don't know what that is the other day my coworker you know apparently there's one of those wwe wrestlers where the, his 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 tagline his punchline is booyaka booyaka i didn't even yes. know what that was so you can you can you can realize how much context i lack to be watching anything uh, close to wrestling So I was just like, maybe let's not dip my feet into it. I'll just let you talk about it. I think that's far better. Yeah, that wrestler, by the way, was Rey Mysterio, yes, who's a who's a Latino Latino wrestler. You know, I keep confusing once, Rey Mysterio and Lothario for some reason. <laughs> but uh, who, yeah, who once, by the way, had a mask versus mask match where the stipulation was that if you unmask them, then they lose the match. But anyway, <gasps> uh, mm, that's a whole different uh, area. <laughs> the low runs culture. deep, clearly. <laughs> very, very, very deep. This is what happened in the world of entertainment and pop culture this week. Cruise starring Tabu, Karina and Kriti Sanon has entered the 100 crore club within 9 days of its release on the big screen. Curb Your Enthusiasm aired its final season 12 finale on Sunday on HBO. Creator Larry David did a call back to his other iconic sitcom The Seinfeld in the final episode. Veteran cinematographer Gangu Ramse passed away on 7th April at the age of 83. He was part of the famous Ramsey brothers known for their cult horror shows and movies like Z Horror Show, Purani Haveli and Tehkhana. Monkey Man the Dev Patel directorial which released in North America last week has recovered its modest budget of 10 million dollars in just 3 days of its release and we're all cheering for that I can't wait for this <laughs> movie to be here Abbas was the one who has always been you know uh, sort of rooting for this movie to do well so I kind am, of are you happy to hear that it's doing we- well I'm I'm happy it's got mixed reviews but I'm excited to see it but I don't know if it's getting an Indian release so I don't think that's yeah, happening fingers either crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed but otherwise we'll catch it on streaming so that will happen Yes so let's start with uh, let's start with Ripley uh, Nanika yes. you've seen five episodes and yes. I've seen uh, two episodes uh, Ripley is based on uh, the uh, I mean there's a movie made uh, on this I think in the early 2000s called 1999 uh, so 1999 yes. it's actually it's uh, uh, even Mr Talented Mr Ripley is based on Patricia Highsmith's uh, book uh, 1955 is when it came out and the book is also titled uh, Talented Mr Ripley so the show mm-hmm. is based on that I haven't watched I, I'm really Uh, you know coming out here as somebody but I haven't watched Talented Mr. Ripley so I don't know how many motifs the movie carries from the original uh, 1999 movie but it's definitely based on the plot of the book So yes, yeah, so even even I haven't seen the original film. Uh, right. And and every listener right now is going and you call yourself a cinephile. I'm sorry. Uh, I think the uh, the 1999 film I think was based in the, the present time for for that yes, time in, yes, in the 90s. Yes. Uh, this one is more faithful to the to the time period the the no- novels are set in. You see if cell phones existed the plot of the movie wouldn't exist. So it has to be faithful to a time where we can have complete suspension of disbelief about the ha- 
happenings, about the ongoings of what is of the plot. So I guess that's why so it needed a, to be in that time a, zone. So it's about a scamster, correct? It's about, yeah, I mean, scamster is like a loose term. I think he's more just like your garden variety uh, psychopath <laughs> of sorts. Like a scamster implies a certain degree of hustle. And this uh-huh. guy was not hustling. Like, let's be so real. <laughs> Ouch. Poor Ripley. Poor Ripley. I mean, he did. He got rich. But, you know, like a scamster, a grifter, a hustler is very different from someone who just like does minor identity theft once in their life and even mm-hmm. then they almost got caught so mm, mm-hmm. not very good at their job so uh, it's uh, i think six episodes the, i think the it's total eight. Of the six eight i'm eight not episodes. sure eight episodes okay. yes so i saw two of them and the first thing that strikes me um of course is the is the look of the show it's short oh and stark my God. black and white i wanted to talk about that as well uh, go on about tell me at least the first two episodes are uh, uh, feature uh, italy very prominently yes uh, I should mention the show is created by Steve Zalian, I think his name is. Yes. And he's like one of the most legendary screenwriters uh, in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, he's worked with Scorsese, he's worked with Spielberg. I think he's been a writer on Schindler's List. So mm-hmm. like the, the the biggest of... Uh, his resume is 90s. pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's the creator of this yes. uh, particular series. And straight off the bat, you can tell. So the 1999 film, I think the runtime of that is under two hours. But this one, like you said, is eight episodes long. Correct. So they they want to delve deeper into the into the story and into the character. But let's address Andrew Scott first of all. So he, of course, uh, reached monumental uh, levels of fame by playing the hot priest in uh, in Fleabag. No, 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 and, no, no. You're erasing oh, a very didn't? important part of his career. He was Moriarty yes, in Sherlock before he was ah, the hot priest in okay. Fleabag. So there's like a generation of girls on Tumblr, especially who were raised looking oh, at so Andrew he was Scott. Even, even as Moriarty, he was hot Moriarty. No, he wasn't hot Moriarty, but he was a very interesting, like psychologically twisted, very dark character. So there's like, uh-huh. uh, you know, like young women have real kinship with the uh, fucked up characters. So I think... Uh, the, the moment you said chops. Tumblr, you need... You, I filled up the rest of the... Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> auto <laughs> Autofill. Yes. Uh, yeah. So he gained a lot of popularity doing that. And then he got mainstream popularity playing the hot priest in Fleabag. And uh, I mean, the caveat is like, you know, you did say that he's every woman's favorite man. And to for like a certain demographic, that's 100 percent true. And it's also strange because Andrew Scott is not straight. So yes, that explains a lot. <laughs> I feel like every woman finds this and like there's a there's a rite of passage when a, every straight woman finds this out about Andrew Scott and then the, something in their heart breaks and, and, and then they're never the same <laughs> in their lives. Hmm, I guess maybe that is that is true because he did play a very, you know, like a, a I think after Desirable. Fleabag is when that trend of like men written by women started because Fleabag, right. the hot priest's character was very, it was clearly written by a woman in the sense that he was a man who was very sensitive, listened to women in touch with his feminine side. So, you know, he 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 started the men written by women um, trend and he's been a little, he's a, Andrew Scott is pretty much part of the cultural lexicon at this point. So yes. this is another yes. wonderful project from him. I thought he was very good in the show. Like his acting chops are pretty much there. He also just has that little fucked up look about him. Like something about him is just, you can't trust him fully. Um, and I think like, right. because he has good experience playing Moriarty. So there's that thing mm-hmm. about him where you don't necessarily um, put your full faith in him and I think that makes him a great character like a great grey character on screen what did you think about him? I mean like I said the first two episodes that I saw the first episode takes its time to really establish what's right. going on um, which I like I think the fact that you have the liberty to do eight episode, eight hour long episodes uh, you have the liberty to sort of build up the story uh, but like I said because it's shot so beautifully it's not like you ever feel like switching it off I mean, there's a there's a sequence in the first episode where Ripley, uh, the our protagonist, has to climb a set of stairs again and again Correct. for something. And in a in a in a regular sort of uh, imagination, you would be like, a hey, insan, how many times will he climb the same stairs? Would it get would it get yet, boring?" And yet, and it's yet, and just yet, watching him climb those that stairs, scene, that it is, is just so gorgeous to look at. Uh, so. I think it, uh, it it takes its time to build up, but once Correct. it it grabs you, it definitely holds you there. Um, I the reason I haven't been able to watch the rest of the episodes is just that I haven't been able to find the time. It's not like I didn't I don't mm-hmm. want to watch the rest of them, which I will. Uh, there's also a very 
peculiar cat in the in the in the first episode yes. which i am told plays a big part yes. uh, in in the future episodes <laughs> So uh I think uh, Ripley this particular show markets itself as a noir show so it completely right. makes sense that the pacing is very very slow it absolutely will not lend to like somebody who's very attuned to binge watching or you're attuned to just finishing a series very quickly it does not lend itself to you know your standard um streaming episode so the first episodes always have to be a little explosive yeah. and a little like they have to do something to garner the attention mm-hmm. Ripley very much subverts that it does not care about you know whether it locks and loads its um audience completely you could pause the show at any point and it's it's a masterpiece it's a gorgeous gorgeous it's beautifully shot and i feel like the way it looks the aesthetics of how it presents itself are a big part of the pull for it because i feel like shows are just not beautiful anymore you mm. feel a certain amount of despair at the bottom of your stomach knowing that the protagonist that you're watching on screen isn't necessarily a good person and you're not rooting you're not going to see like something bright and wonderful happen on screen you're going to look at somebody who is a little who is a little psychopathic <laughs> carry out what they will which is a little far far off from the movie talented mr ripley because what little i've seen of it it's like very bright it's very colorful this one is yeah, not right. it has a very clear air of despair about it but i do like that uh-huh. to a certain degree okay so okay. yeah but did so, you like the it, noah aspects of it like you know does it feel like a proper i mean you're somebody who really likes noah so i love noah yeah, yeah. i was i was just going to mention that um Yeah I think the black and white photography of noir films I mean there's a lot of uh, stuff about it online you can check Correct. it out but uh, there's that aspect of you know noir is about essentially it's it's a crime story Correct. which is unraveling story the darkness slowly. at the pool of humanity yes. so yeah. it's it's quite literally about the black and white of Correct. of life right, right. Uh, um, and 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 how how what are the depths of darkness a person Correct. can be pushed into is always a big uh, uh, big aspect of it but i did wonder at times when i was looking at those those gorgeous italian locales where i was like mm-hmm. would this have worked if it was in color and i i, I think we'll never know but uh, but i like that choice i like that uh, you know that they netflix has given someone a budget to shoot an eight episode series in black and white in at a time when you said uh, you know there's the 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 economy of eyeballs is so important for yes. them where everything has to be bright and shiny and correct. has to catch your attention correct uh, so it's it's good to know that uh, you know as much as we uh, criticize netflix for put throwing everything uh, on the wall and seeing what sticks they are taking these little chances they also did that film roma alfonso cuarón's yes, roma yes. which was also shot in gorgeous yes. black and white um so yeah i think that's that's an art form i think that uh, if you incorporated in a good way you can do wonders with it so uh, i i'm looking forward to it i want to watch the rest of it and the music the the language Correct. you know when uh, andrew scott uh, replies communicating with italians without knowing a word of italian mm-hmm. those are pretty funny uh, well done scenes so overall yeah even i really liked what i saw so if you're someone who's wondering whether to give it a shot please do i think replie will be quite rewarding for you I mean the whole point of the show is that it is not uh, it's going to subvert your expectation of what a show should look like and how it mm-hmm. should behave and it completely still surprises you. I feel like another of those things is I'm not sure how profitable it's going to be. It's like a, it's a limited series so there's going to be no part 2 nothing. It's going to come mm-hmm. out and then it's pretty much done and I think it's aimed more towards like a slightly more serious audience cuz I think Netflix was losing out um the street cred where people were on joking the about the grown ups yeah yeah, yeah. the people were joking about the fact that netflix shows all look the same so i feel mm-hmm. like you know uh, the, the average audience's tastes have become a little too attuned to like you know something that can just play in the background netflix that can play in the background this is the kind of show that you have to this take is, out time so for this is so po- this is so i mean i'm thinking that in in a few minutes time we'll be talking about wrestling in a bit so i'm just <laughs> like <laughs> Sure, let's go with talking about what grown-ups should watch. And should no, no, watch. no, no, nothing about what grown-ups should watch. But just like Talented Mr. Ripley's already been adapted, so this wasn't yeah, that they were yeah. bringing something new to the screen. They were taking a somewhat well-known story, and you know, just taking like a really luxurious amount of time with mm. it, sort of living the story in an aesthetic sense that it needs to be done. So it really, in that sense, feels like somebody's passion project. And I think that is personally for me, I think that really matters a lot. I love it when a show is just like. it's less about whether it's um, 
whether it's going to have explosive popularity and more about the fact that whether it's beautiful and whether the person who made it really cared for it or not so i really really rate ripley highly for that i'm five episodes done um i do take issues with the pacing but then i also realize that this is a creative choice and rather than criticizing the show for being slow i need to bring myself at peace and slow down a little to be able to watch it another thing i will say that the characters are very beautifully well done very thoughtfully designed like in this starting um ripley clearly comes from a poorer background uh, as compared to dicky so he dresses like a poor person you can see how he slouches how he slumps how his trousers fall on his body that this is a guy not coming from money and how he has to adapt to dicky's mannerisms and it's a guy who clearly comes from money so he has to slowly that obsession with how much he wants to has to really embody the guy to be able to you know take his identity upon himself so i feel mm-hmm. that way i feel like it's so beautifully done so thoughtfully designed in every single motif of it that you really have to bring your attention span you have to slow down and you know sort of tailor yourself to watch the show as opposed to the ta- the show being tailor made for something to you to watch on netflix so right. i really All like right. that All right before we move on I have a small announcement which is about the TNM NL election fund that's the news minute and news laundry election fund ahead of the upcoming general elections news laundry has tied up with the news minute yet again to bring you important stories straight from the ground this time instead of one big fund project we are doing smaller projects so you can choose which one you would like to power We will have more than 15 reporters, producers and editors from the NL and TNM team on the ground covering various states including Manisha, Atul, Thanya and Sudipto and your contributions will directly power their work. So head to newslaundry.com/2024-electionfund that's newslaundry.com/2024-electionfund Please head to the link to contribute so that you can get uh, a good and fair assessment and coverage of the upcoming elections. All right, the next thing we're talking about is uh, again something that we usually don't review on this show, but uh, since the elections are uh, coming up, as I mentioned in the announcement, so all the major political, at least the three major political parties we'll be talking about. have released their official songs so nenika uh, i believe you've heard two of the three songs yes, that were sent have. to us yes i have i really gave them a lot of time and a lot <laughs> of thought <laughs> uh, by the way i should mention so two of these songs the congress and the bjp songs are in hindi mm-hmm. and the tmc song understa- understandably is in bengali so uh, since i think both of our bengali is very limited there's only <laughs> and and surprisingly the uh, the uh, tmc song was on youtube but they haven't added captions so, oh, so you couldn't understand i'm giving advice yeah. to the tmc team but guys if you're listening to this and if your song is in bengali <laughs> maybe just add the subtitles so that we can understand what you're listening to but uh, let's start with the bjp song which is the only one i think that has an official title it's called that modi ka parivar yes and but that's uh, also like a their election campaign of sorts like they really they yeah, launched so it for a while that's what while i want to talk about so. it's less of a party song and more of an individual a song praising an individual well i we mean you all know even in 2014 when modi came to power for the first time the motive was ab ki baar modi sarkar so i think yeah, bjp yeah, yeah. has always been very clear that they're going to project one person as the face of the party to sort of unite everybody's um, efforts to that one but, place so like <laughs> at least there was sarkar to it now it's like even forget sarkar no, also no no sarkar parivar now no parivar sarkar se aage badh gaye babas like it's more homely <laughs> now it's more emotional sorry sorry <laughs> whether you know it or not you are part of modi's family Absolutely. we are all we are all part family. of modi's family but uh, 2014 it was ab ki baar modi sarkar 2019 it was phir ek baar modi sarkar and this time it's ab ki baar 400 par So what do you think of the song I think uh, it's a very it's a, it's a very sort of supposed to be a soulful song Yes and it uh, it comes with a video of course a music video of course. and of course you can't the, just have the, the a song, song nobody's going to listen to it on Spotify it has to come with a music video <laughs> you so you can play it um so the song essentially is uh, enumerating the uh, the what do you call the the good things that the government right. has supposedly done and then it comes uh, and the 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 what do you call the tense the 
the voice of the song is is praising uh, the prime minister right. and he said us unhone sab kuch kiya hai aur wo aapke liye kar rahe hain and and then of course it cuts to the chorus where the man himself they've taken an audio bite from a rally right. and then he says kiska parivar or something like mod kiska kon parivar and then the audience is like modi ka parivar right right you know yes. which i think was a little like i mean like modi ji can do no wrong but his register the voice they've not auto tuned the voice <laughs> like when like when it's singing in a you know this thing and suddenly it's like modi ka and then you like at least match up the scale of the of the song well i guess you can criticize their creative choices quite a bit uh, which is well, fair. while you can while yeah yeah fair <laughs> uh, <laughs> i did uh, think that the song was like a little catchy like i in the end they, they do this motif where you have people from a bunch of different languages saying that we are modi ka parivar so you have somebody in bangla saying we are modi ka parivar somebody yes, in tamil end. saying we are modi ka parivar yes. so sort of you know to pan india uni- unity to uh, bring that on the forefront and i think this modi ka parivar thing was a retort to somebody saying that he doesn't have a family i think uh, yeah i think when he was when he or someone from his party was asked about this i think the reply was ke modi ji ka modi ji ka 2 crore logon ka parivar hai like Correct. a bunch of times we see women wearing hijabs uh, lip syncing to the song we see modi ji i think putting a garland or a medal on a sikh gentleman and right, a couple right. of cutaways to kashmir as well to kashmir and uh, to kashmir and the northeast so for all intents and purposes it's like a traditional uh, election song Correct. Uh, which tries to reach out to everyone uh nene ka on a scale of 1 to 5 how much would you like to um, rate uh, modi ka parivar are you asking me if it's a banger or not <laughs> yes i, I am very much i think it's 3 on the banger scale like uh, not bad i may you know i if somebody remixed it onto a dj set at a house party i would be like curious choice but i wouldn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Will it make you vote for the BJP? Ooh, hmm, who knows? But Ooh, okay. uh, but uh, if I think like if you expose somebody to the song for the first time, I don't think it's groundbreaking enough to, for a new person like exactly. somebody that who's was just got an Indian citizenship. Yeah, like they they yeah. just got Indian citizenship and they'd be like, oh my god, this banger, this <laughs> producer, I'm hundred percent voting for. I don't think that is. I don't think the song is that good. So I suppose they were supposed to tick off a box and build like a jingle yeah, yeah, so they yeah. have managed to build a jingle and they put a lot of effort into the video so I guess they definitely got like a good creative agency to do the work for it so good, good for it, them good on it. that regard uh 3 on 5 banger three stars Done. I guess good enough yeah uh, okay let's come to the 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 congress uh, theme song or the election song <laughs> my first takeaway from this was uh it's a depression ballad like let's be so clear about that hey, like can the, you blame it it's a congress yeah, song yeah exactly i was just like it's a ballad. congress song so it completely checks out cuz the whole vibe is like hame milega nyay and you know andhere se hokar ja so essentially the whole vibe is very humko man ki shakti dena because you know clearly yeah. they're down in the dumps so they need all that's the true. faith and hope that they can get right now and that's what the song is trying to get to so it's supposed to be like it's very clearly like a depression song i guess uh I don't think it's scale. Can, uh, I, it's ha, not as ahead. high on the banger scale. Like I'm really? sorry. Okay. Did you so like it more? Did you think it was more of a banger? So I'll tell you what the BJP song and the Congress song they both sound to, sounded to me like uh, rejected songs by Preetam. Where probably he. So, okay, I, I don't I'm going to say I, I, I think they sound rejected. Prasoon Joshi songs, not Preetam. Oh, he composed them also. No, I don't think so. But maybe I mean Achha, I got the vibe because oh, I think Prasoon Joshi is the guy who sang your Tare Zameen Par yeah, type yeah, songs, yeah. right? Like so. That's true. Also, family songs. Uh, Prasoon Joshi of Aap Me Badi Fakiri Fame. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was saying so. Ha, huh, these two songs, na, they are like they could be like on a on your average Bollywood album. Yeah, they will yeah. not be the most popular song, but they're in there as act as fillers. Correct. Also, the music video for this, you can tell, of course, that the leading the the current government has way more budgets to spend on uh, the video because the Modi Parivar video, like I said, it's shot in HD and they have Correct. the Kashmir valley. And it was and shot specifically for the song for itself. Yes, yes. The, Congress the, the Congress song is like they've taken clips from other 
the tmc song is a banger because <laughs> like first like certified 5 out 5 like mix it no, 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 with no, the five, dj track not track? that good also okay, it's not korbol or gojit bore but <laughs> it is like the 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 bjp and congress is like you know soulful like you said right. they're urging people to please right. come vote for us right. tmc is like we're going to bang drums we want to get if, if people don't vote for us we don't like, care it's we make them dance like it's a war cry it's not a ballad it's, a war it's cry. not like yes. it's not a sanskrit shlok it's like no, 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 let's no. get out also, of here Also, also the BJP song and the Congress song. The BJP is praising Modi. The Congress Correct. one is like, "Oh, Rahul Gandhi is amazing." The TMC, of course, right up front, you see Mamta Banerjee walking to a rally. Within the first twenty seconds, it takes a dig at Amit Shah. Okay, which none of the others do. I'm it's like, a diss track. Like, it's a <laughs> diss track. Yes. It's a proper rap diss track. So again, I couldn't. I could make out uh, like uh, uh, like very vaguely what they are saying because right. the song is in uh, Bengali and a lot of Bengali words are very similar to Hindi. Right. So I could tell they're talking about corruption and co- I I don't know why I said corruption. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> That's how good the song is. Then, right? <laughs> it's bringing it's the Bengali uh, yeah, yeah. flavor it's, to it's it too. Take- It's taking a dig at uh, the the opponents, and it's also glorifying not just Mamta Banerjee, but you also see a lot of a uh, couple of other TMC leaders also. Uh, but I liked that you you know you can play this at Durga Puja, you can play this at uh, oh. any pandal, and it will instantly get people dancing. So right out there for me, if you had to uh, rank these songs, the the TMC one is like way above the on other the banger two. scale. Because okay, in the hmm. on the banger scale because it's it's right up there. So uh, maybe I don't know much about TMC's politics, but uh, they they know how to get a. So get a if you going. walked into India and the moment you walked yes. in and they handed you like a voter ID and they were like, okay, listen to three songs on basis of yeah. that, you will vote yeah. for a government. Will you go for TMC? Without question, I was like, these Damn. people know how to party and these people know how to fight. So I'm going there. <laughs> I'm going for that. Huh? Like, Where you think... are and whatever, whatever, what I don't know. Like this, these people. But have you ever had any other political campaign song that you really? Oh, my favorite was with? of course. Uh, uh, he's not not going through the best times right now. But Paat Saal Kejriwal by Vishal oh. Vishal Dadlani oh. was like that was also a banger. Like, have ah. you heard it? I haven't actually. I might go back Abhi and listen to it so because if it's Vishal like, Dadlani, then I presume yeah. that it's like a bit of a like a desi rock banger of sorts. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was the chorus ah. was like "Paat Saal Kejriwal Kejriwal." <laughs> It's like that again. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it was a it was a bad girl. Hmm. So yeah, that's the one I remember. I remember uh, Udit Narayan in twenty fourteen had uh, this thing. Uh, I don't remember, but the chorus was it was for the BJP, and this chorus was like Modi aane wala hai. So that's oh, that's all I remember. Oh, <laughs> interesting, interesting. Another thing and, I think very yeah. important that I thought about the BJP song was like you know everybody like a bunch of minorities like uh, he got me a job, he got me this, he gave me mm-hmm. Sahara and this and that. But almost it's like uh, he's a god to the family. Like he's like yeah, the presiding, yeah, yeah. like you know, the father figure, the patriarchal father figure to the family. I was like very nice. It's a good way to mythologize yourself. Very interesting. But yeah, I think the links of these songs will be in the. 
your description so you yes. can check them out yourself and tell us what ratings you would give yeah. purely on a musical scale guys purely on a musical scale aside. like whether yeah, it's keep... a banger or not and if you just yeah. walked into india with a voter id would the song make you want to vote for them or not or vote for them yes uh, please write to uh, us and tell so, us yeah. about that uh, okay let's talk about uh, the next netflix thing we're talking about which is a film called scoop uh, which stars uh, gillian anderson uh, billy piper rufus sewell a couple of uh, people in this star cast are also uh, well known uh, of course julian anderson is the most well known name uh, i was wondering where i've seen billy piper who plays uh, the you the have journalist seen her in doctor who i have seen her in doctor who yeah yes. how did you guess that because that is that was her breakout role right correct yes, yes. she plays the uh, the sidekick to the doctor yes. i forgot what she's called but uh, scoop is about the prince andrew scandal that broke out where uh, his connections with uh, jeffrey epstein were uh, addressed in this one mm-hmm. uh, bbc interview and uh, although it was speculated since a long time that he was involved in this that one interview is like the pivotal moment where uh, it was sort of established that uh, you know there's something fishy going on uh, i've seen about 40% of the film and I was very skeptical going in because I'm like, a interview pay like how much of a, a narrative can you build? Correct. But it actually kept me quite engaged. I thought it was very. It's I, I also I'm slightly biased to these journalist uh, expose kind of films like uh, Spotlight is one right uh, that comes to mind. Uh, and yeah, whenever journalists are doing their job well in a movie, I'm like, yes, yes. you go, go for it, you, <laughs> you go, go, girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> also there was that film uh, that was that show right the Aaron Sorkin show um mm, iske clips viral hote rehte hain the hai. news uh, week no uh, news room news room news, the news room, room right yeah which was very uh, which which i like a lot uh, nanika did you see it and what did you think of it so i watched the full movie i think i was preoccupied with something halfway there so it didn't feel as laborious to me for sure i felt like the plot was rather concise it didn't i think the movie run time isn't even a lot it's one one and a half hours at best it's, it's, it's a 1 hour 40 minutes yeah, yeah it's it's not a long movie at all but also to be very honest there's not a lot happening plot twice uh it's the fact that they were hustling like this sort of essentially the story is that they're trying to make sure that the interview happens and right. it's not i mean if you're bbc it's not very difficult to get an interview with a member of the royal family <laughs> like let's mm-hmm. be real about that but essentially mm-hmm. the rest of the movie is about how they prepare for the interview and how prince andrew is very clearly uh, you know not in the right and how they sort of nail him on that show they cross question him to a degree and he clearly fumbles and you know just uh, reveals himself to be right. to be who he is and uh, that way i felt like julian anderson she has done like a decently good job i really enjoyed i really enjoy seeing julian anderson in anything she does so i think that way the movie was decent but it wasn't out of the world for me okay uh, i think partly also because Ever since the Epstein scandal has broken, I feel like there's a certain section of society, or I, I suppose like liberal society, that considers the Epstein scandal to be like a little thing that they can, you like they don't necessarily care about the women who were victimized by the scandal, but more they like the aura of how the people who were revealed to be complicit in the scandal are just like rich characterless freaks and less about the fact less about the victims of the scandal so i don't disagree with anything you uh, anything you said right now i think it's very relevant that like I, even i didn't think of it the way like you said right now that uh The, the 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 survivors of this or the victims of this has have all, almost become secondary correct but the epstein case is almost like a genre of entertainment in itself yes right? Because, it is right uh, so so then i mean hasn't that ship sailed a little bit where it's like like if you if you really had to and and the media is also to blame for it the media and the internet correct. the fact that this this whole thing uh, like it's the kind of stuff you it, it's every conspiracy theorist's wet dream yes, correct yes exactly like, oh, this, it's literally a conspiracy this, theory yeah. at this point more than the fact that you know what happens to the victims happen to the victims mm-hmm. it's like they'll pull out flight logs to be like this person was at the island okay yes this person was at the island what are you doing about it as opposed you know just like pointing fingers you know those people are going to go completely scot free it doesn't change anything right, for you right. you just like to be able to point out look at the flight logs and be like oh all the rich are in some sort of cahoots with each other and they secretly abuse but then, uh, but then women. isn't isn't bringing the uh, the objective to bring down these powerful men also a means to sort of give justice to the so I, to the 
people. Think for like what Newsnight actually did on its own, you know, bringing Prince Andrew having this interview so that he ended up being stripped of his royal duties is definitely right. like I think they did something valuable there. But this movie being made, which had like a very anyway, I mean, I'm not debating the morality of it. No, I don't uh, think uh, the movie. What I'm trying to get at is that, like you said, that you know they're gonna these powerful men are probably gonna go scot free. Yes, isn't that the root of the problem that we're trying to get at? That, yes, yes. Uh, so I feel like this man had uh, yeah this this man had access to ex presidents and yes. you know the, the movie producers and whatnot, and. in the social structure that we live in we've seen that these men barely if ever pay the price for the Correct. possibly horrible things they did right so w- wouldn't you then say that this being reiterated again and again like i feel like every 3 months there's a new list which is released of uh, uh, epstein's clients <laughs> So and then the the cycle of jokes starts again. Like mm-hmm. there was this whole thing where Stephen Hawking was in 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 one of the lists. I of, know uh, that was quite. And people uh, were like, "Oh, Stephen Hawking was freaky, or like to get freaky, or whatever." And the jokes that came out of it were very nasty. Like I'm not particularly someone who's offended by it. It's fine by me if right. you want to make jokes right. about it. But the jokes were nasty. Like let's be real. All right. So uh, those were our opinions about uh, the film Scoop, uh, which is on Netflix right now. Uh, all right, so to wrap this up, uh, let's yes, get to WrestleMania. Yes, Abbas, I can uh, tell America. that you've been itching to talk about it. You have a big smile on your uh, face. You insisted should, uh, on it, so <laughs> so let's so okay, okay, okay. Before, before we get huh. into it, you have to explain yes. it like I'm five. What is WrestleMania? Is okay. it connected to WWE? I was um, I was prepared for thing. this. Um, of course. Okay. So, uh, all right. I'm assuming a lot of listeners and viewers right now probably are not the biggest wrestling fans. So WrestleMania is essentially the biggest live event that the WWE puts out. It happens generally either from the last uh, like between the last week of March and the first week of April. Uh and it is like you can say it's the season finale of all the storylines of all the all the magnificent big budget stuff that they want to do. Uh the WWE puts its show. It used to be a one night event. Now it's because they have so much to do and so much to say it's turned into a two night event so, so is it televised yeah, it, is it live can you get tickets to go live. and watch it it's, oh. yes can you get tickets like the tickets go uh, like they're sold out within seconds and then oh. there's a whole industry online which uh, sells tickets uh, boot like tickets black. <laughs> yes so it happens that uh, like this this weekend it happened in philadelphia it happens in in a new place uh, in a new city every year um i forget the name of the uh, do the city bid for it like the olympics like the la is put in la is put in a bid like i'll give 5 million to us actually yeah, so oh. uh, again <laughs> okay. uh, so <laughs> i was just going to make uh, a throw away so joke i didn't realize they take it very so, seriously so over there so essentially that's the thing about wrestling right wwe uh initially uh, wwe used to do uh, the the events in like whatever arenas and whatever mm-hmm. but now mayors like Bit they for buy it. for wrestlemania Ooh, to come to their show intru- so it's like the olympics in that sense that's lovely i mean it is kind of like the olympics of wrestling right. in a way uh, with with a lot more like razzmatazz and 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 camp thrown in uh, but there's it's a whole week long activity so they they essentially camp out in this uh, one city So Monday, uh, the televised shows uh, that WWE has two televised shows called Raw and SmackDown. So there's Monday Night Raw before WrestleMania. Then there's SmackDown before WrestleMania on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Then on Friday night they do the Hall of Fame ceremony. Then uh, on Saturday they do a two-hour pre-show, and then the first night of WrestleMania happens, which runs for four hours. Then they the next night they give out the Slammy Awards, which are like these internet awards for like whatever best entrance, best performer of the year, whatever, whatever. That happens on Sunday afternoon. Then they do four hours of WrestleMania again uh, that that night, Sunday night, which is the big big finale. Then less than twenty four hours they do another episode of Monday Night Raw, which addresses the fallout of all the storylines that were that were wrapped up in WrestleMania. Anyway, it's. so these people have no uh, time to like rest no time to sleep essentially whatever city they pick becomes the mecca of wrestlemania why was wrestlemania 40 important okay three reasons firstly because of course it's the 40th year of them doing this show so it had to be like grand and big and all of that now the next two reasons one is an on screen reason one is an off screen reason the on screen reason was that dwayne johnson the rock mm-hmm. returned right to again sort of uh, dip his toes in wrestlemania and now here's something you should understand the rock is the biggest movie star on the planet so that now is, what was his last he... marvel movie adam something 
No, that was not Marvel. That was DC. I'm just going to list very, very calmly. Like yeah. That okay. Too. Sorry. What was uh, his last DC movie? Black Adam. Right. It flopped so hard. He was like, it I might as well hard. go yes, back to make my also... losses, <laughs> to cover my losses. Yes. So not only has The Rock come back in WWE, he's the WWE recently changed their ownership. They are now owned by a company called TKO. Okay. And The Rock is now on the board of directors of TKO. So it's literally oh. your boss showing up at work to wrestle his employees and uh, you can't do anything about it. The Rock shows up. The Rock in the last 10 years has been playing this movie star persona where he comes, he gets, says the famous lines, he gets the cheers and then he fucks off. Okay. Right. And then he and takes cashes a few a big years off. check in the process. Sorry, uh, cashing checks. Yes. This time around when he came, he was supposed to fight uh, a match with Roman Reigns, who's been the WWE champion for the last three and a half years. There's a whole big story, which I would not like to go into. Now, his challenger was supposed to be this third guy called Cody Rhodes, who comes from a lineage of wrestling. He's the son of a very legendary wrestler called Dusty Rhodes. And there was a fan backlash online where people were like, oh, just because The Rock is a movie star and a board of directors of TKO, he can just come and take a championship match. So The Rock and... The, the the writers of WWE pivoted and spun this whole story around so that now The Rock is the bad guy in the WWE storyline. And he played the bad guy so well, like forget Black Adam. This should have been like his Oscar Magnum nomination. Magnum Opus, his Where Academy. <laughs> he, would, he would show up in cities and basically diss the crowd. And because it's The Rock and he's so good at like uh, playing with the crowd, he started randomly beating up wrestlers backstage, making them bleed, dropping the F-bombs, which are all things that the WWE has stayed away from. They wanted to be a family-friendly product. But because of The Rock coming back, all this edgy stuff has come out. And Cody Rhodes, who's been trying to get the championship for two years, finally won the match at WrestleMania 40. And it was not just like, he didn't just win the match. All the previous legends of WWE came back to help him. John Cena came back. The Undertaker came back. Uh, there's a character called Seth Rollins who has a different B story with the ch with the champion Roman Reigns because he betrayed him 10 years ago because, because of which Roman Reigns turned into a villain. Did That's Hulk it. Hogan come back or is he not a WWE character? Oh, he didn't. Hulk Hogan didn't come back. But The Rock fought the night before and The Rock won the match. Anyway, long story short, the matches were brilliant. Uh, it was one of the best nights of wrestling. That's the on-screen reason. Is The wrestling was great. The characterization was great. <laughs> the off-screen reason is the WWE was run by a man called Vince McMahon. Okay? okay. Vince McMahon used to play a villain on screen in the WWE product, but he was the owner of the company. And it was an open secret that Vince McMahon is a terrible, terrible person. Okay. And a bunch of women and ex-employees have come out uh, with their allegations a couple of months ago this year, in January this year. And they have sued Vince McMahon. And if you read that chart sheet, it is horrible. There are allegations of Vince McMahon defecating on his employees. Okay, like that's the level of um, insane. And for people who know Vince McMahon, they're like, yeah, of course, he, he's the kind of man. So Vince McMahon had to let go of all of his... Uh, uh, and he's the one running res wrestling for the like the 39 years of the 40 years of WrestleMania. He has been the one in charge. This was the first WrestleMania without Vince McMahon. So there was this air of will they won't they will they be able to do it will they be able to pull no, it off? It was a, yes, that and it was a sigh of relief that finally we get to do things the way oh. we wanted. The evil bad man is out. Um, the people. So the right now the guy who's in charge of WWE is a is is a wrestler called. Paul Levesque, who goes by the ring name Triple H. Mm -hmm. uh, any wrestling fan from the late 90s or early 2000s would know Triple H was one of the most legendary bad guys. Who was married to Vince McMahon's daughter, by the way, Stephanie oh. McMahon. <laughs> okay. And it's considered that Stephanie McMahon and Triple H actually had been trying to get Vince McMahon off the ownership board mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. There's a whole internal business sex succession tussle that has been going on, which you can read about online. That's a whole different WWE worthy story that's been going on offstage. So this was the first WrestleMania where the wrestlers actually uh, got like the ringmaster is gone now. The now the now the circus animals can actually have their day in the sun. So <laughs> well, it's when literally the, when that. the guards are away, the inmates will play. Yeah, <laughs> the, the inmates got to play. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, if you see the last ten minutes of WrestleMania Forty Night Two, 
uh you can find clips on twitter online it's just when cody rhodes won that championship the entire locker room showed up to lift him on his uh, lift him on their shoulders you could see a palpable joy in everybody because this was like the culmination of a fight they'd been fighting backstage and and in the locker room where they like finally we have a winner who's worthy and we can get behind him and we are happy so wrestlemania 2 this 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 sport of this fake sport of where men and women beat each other up ended with like grown up men crying man tears of like <laughs> oh finally <laughs> we get to be free yes that the bad guys insane. the bad guys will pay the price the good guys will end up on top and it was all just so 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 emotionally the overwhelming minutes, they emotional they had all these previous wrestlers show up so if you've been someone watching uh, uh, wrestling since you were a kid it was like so much catharsis that everybody showed up and yeah wrestlemania 40 uh who was everything i wanted it to be and no. you know <laughs> do you if, have any questions then if we'd had this conversation like a year ago i would have been like i don't think i would have had any sympathy for what you were feeling right now but uh, last year i got into i made the decision to get into sports and i sort of yeah. understand how important and vulnerable and emotionally important the human element of uh, sport and the narrativizing yes. of the human element of sport is because ultimately it's a story about you human persistence and human moxie right so uh so good for you abbas i and i got Cody really Rhodes, emotional when he was one and then his mom came into the ring and he Aww. gave his championship to his mother and the whole thing was because the rock as the bad guy had been taunting his mother saying i'll beat him up in front of you i'll make Aww. him bleed and all of that so then and then the rock got choke slammed by the undertaker <laughs> so that he can not do anything and cody rhodes <laughs> gave the championship to his mother <laughs> oh it was it was just and his his nephews and nieces and wife and kids were in the ring and he was surrounded Aww. by all the good guys it was just so heartwarming Anyway, I'm, I'm glad that worked out well. I do not know enough about wrestling to be commenting on this, but you I'm... know what? So I, I, I'll say this for anybody who's not even if not into wrestling, please check out the last ten minutes of the final match of night two, uh, and and just 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 see the 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 the, the jubilation, lot of emotions, yeah. jubilation that happened. Yeah, it was. It was wonderful. Like seventy thousand people in the stadium who all go nuts when Cody Rhodes wins. Interesting. Sport as a spectacle ah, so is yes. always something that's been very close to my heart. <laughs> which is why when I found out that you know we're talking about wrestling, I remember that Roland Barthes essay about the world of wrestling and how it yes, plays up yeah, emotions. Yeah, yeah. So the audience has, you know, the audience is aware that this is not an authentic storytelling, but they sacrifice it because they love that exaggeration of it because they love the notion of justice that comes with wrestling and yes. its exaggeration. to yes. emotions and i feel like this one is very much about um, the justice of it if you read the article I like mean, at the very yeah. end it says that you know when you're anonymized like you know your wrestler will play up his persona for the ring and then eventually he'll just leave with his wife like an anonymous person and you know all your notions of justice have been satisfied and all your notions of what is what is a spectacle have been satisfied and you realize that you know very similar to 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 morality and to you know what what humans have been trying to accomplish with god <laughs> so i feel like yeah i mean i i i understand why this uh, because i mean i I'm, i'm i'm a recent sports fan so i understand why it is so valuable and i'm glad you got to you along with i don't know 70000 80000 how oh, many 70, fans oh 70000 just in the stadium, stadium. there are millions watching i mean millions yeah, of watch yeah, yeah. so i'm glad that you and millions others got to have their catharsis and to watch like something they so beloved some beloved childhood uh, storyline conclude in this uh. one of Yes. manner and wow i'm kind of emotional right now you know <laughs> i get it uh, i get it i i thought i was going to joke about it but you know what i get it who okay okay i quickly have to ask who is your favorite yes. wrestler is that a thing is that the thing i can ask I mean, my favorite teams? wrestler is the rock which is why oh. i got back to watching uh, week to week I, like i used to marginally keep up with what's happening in the storyline but the rock showing up again was like my, the pivotal point where i got back in and he was just so like none of us wanted none of us expected him to become a bad guy again because i'm like oh he's he's selling beauty products and he's like the <laughs> the face of so many brands there's no way he'll become a bad guy again 
but he did and but he, he did played that. the bad guy so well and him playing the bad guy so well is why the good guy winning makes it so much Aww, more special that so, is so true so yeah but yeah the rock is uh, is is my favorite wrestler and he showed up so this morning the fallout what happened was the rock has now gone away to show to few mo- movies mm-hmm. but before going he has uh, issued a challenge to Cody Rhodes ah oh, that i'm going to come back as they as they say sports got me through a bad time in life by making it worse so <laughs> 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 so I guess you know I can't oh. afford another obsession but you can come back and tell me what happens next and I will, uh, I will, yes and yeah I I think I'll ask Shubhang to just unnecessarily link the Roland Barthes essay about the world of wrestling yes please because I can I want to be boring and pedantic so please go and read that it's quite interesting actually and it actually does play about the emotional spectacle of the sport which is quite interesting to me always All right that brings us to the end of uh, this week on that very uh, emotional wrestling note uh, that brings us to the end of uh, this particular episode um thank you mr athor thank you mr momin and that's a wrap journalism at news laundry is powered by the public because when the public pays the public is served visit newslaundry.com/subscription and pick a payment plan of your choice pay to keep news free and independent your future and indeed the future of democracy depends on it